What's up, everyone? It is June 14th, 2021. Uh, I just wanted to go over some hypothetical trades, some other trades, and just some of the things I saw in the market today. And uh, let me know if you would have taken any of these setups that I show. I um, just wanted to talk through my thoughts and uh, obviously become a better trader myself and hopefully help someone else become a better trader along, along the way. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, I had a couple things on Focus today. Uh, Roku and Tesla were pretty big. Um, Apple as well. Uh, I was looking at Facebook. Didn't get the continuation that we liked. Um, and video was nice today. Um, so there was quite a, a little bit of uh, setups, but they all happened all around the right, uh, right around the same time, which was a little bit um, unfortunate. But I will go over pretty much what I was looking for and if there was any follow through uh, in terms of that. So the first one I have pulled up is uh, obviously Roku. And I uh, want to look at the uh, higher time frame analysis. And sorry for all the lines. I just keep that there because those are my key levels. Um, so we'll zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit more clear. As you can see that we're on an uptrend here. So I'll be looking to play uh, calls, obviously. And we kind of had a, you know, a higher low here, which was nice. A little pullback. And this was sort of a rally base rally um, kind of setup that I had going here. And if you look before today, obviously, let's see if we can get it here. Um, one candle there we go so it was kind of setting up for a rally base rally um, which was nice and uh, yeah so the plan that I had going was above 350 um, if 350 was already um, in play before pre-market or before market open um, that I would look at 353 and how I got that level uh, was just looking at where um, these sort of resistance level was um, and 353, even 352, I could have said, um, but 352 was just a nice round number, um, not the not a psychological number per se, but a nice round number that hit a lot of points here, um, and then actually the data goes back to support this even further. Um, so we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, and then it broke it on the ninth uh, try. Um, and I like this because we had some consolidation here. We had a nice trend line supporting this as well. Um, so it looked good, um, and I think there was also a 30-minute use zone, um, if I'm not mistaken. It's not the cleanest, but yeah. Um, all right, but we'll get into it and uh, sort of see what the setup looked like. All right, and I have NQ pulled up as well to see, to compare each other. Okay, so um, I usually don't trade within the first five minutes. Uh, it would have worked out, obviously, but... Uh, it Took out 350, but I usually wait for this candle to close. So right as you can see, Roku has relative strength. We had um, NQ obviously fell in the first five minutes. Roku was strong. Um, and a good entry uh, would have been actually right here. I'll show it real quick. There's actually there was one entry at this close. And then uh, in hindsight, obviously, this would have been another good entry as a little flag pattern here. Um, there was a supply zone here. I just... Um, I just these are like little notes for myself. So it's a three hour use zone, heavily used zone. Um, there's 353 level was the key level I was looking to get long over. Um, so you could have taken it at this close, but obviously the pro the uh, optimal entry was this uh, 945 close and get a quick push up. And actually, you know, it look doesn't look like a big candle, but that's a pretty good move. That's uh, 354 all the way up to almost 358. So it's a four dollar move. That's uh, it's a pretty nice day at the office right there. Um, another entry could have been here, um, but let's look at this one real quick. So right as we got to um, this candle, um, you could see that uh, NQ was bouncing off demand. Um, I had another price level demand area down here. It's a gap zone, so not the strongest. It kind of ripped through this gap zone, not a big deal, but it bounced off this, and this is all within the first 10 minutes of the open. Um, then as you can see, we pushed immediately back up. Buyers stepped in. We were strong, um, and then you could obviously see that uh, there was an increase in volume down here. So that was another confirmation that I had here. Um, notice on this red candle, the lowest amount of volume within that span too. So that just shows that sellers really aren't that strong. Um, and this would have been a great entry. You could have entered right at this break of the 355 key level. Um, or as soon as we retested this 353 level, that's another huge indicator. Um, and then you could see we're kind of basing inside this used uh, supply zone again. And also bouncing off this key level, which was another key confirmation. So that was uh, nice as well. Um, and Roku had a very nice day. Obviously, we're up almost 18 bucks on the day, over 6%. No reason to take this thing long, um, especially when it's you know way past its range for the day. It's already up over 5%. No reason to get long at this point. 
Um, and yeah, so that was uh, one trade on Roku that could have worked out. Um, another trade that I had lined up that I wrote in my pre-market plan was Apple over 128. Um, <clears throat> Dylan mentioned a key level 127.89. I like 128 just because it's a more clear number. A lot of retail traders like 128 on Apple. Um, and let's first look at the daily time frame. Um, so you can see that uh, Apple has been really been waiting to break out of this range it's been in. And, you know, we've kind of been accumulating over here around this 126, 127 area. And obviously the 128 level is pretty, you know, heavy resistance here. Um, I'll go down to a one hour just so you guys can see it a little bit clearer. Okay, so you see it here now that we have 120. I guess Dylan may have been spot on with his 127.89 level. That's actually very nice. Um, but just because I'm me, I chose 128. Just because I know that retail <clears throat> traders, excuse me, retail traders uh, are looking at this 128 level. All right, so intraday time frame. Um, so when I saw in pre-market that Apple was strong and we we're going to break out of this range, I knew that was a good clue that we're going to have some momentum today on Apple. Um, and again, let's look at the first five-minute candle that Apple had. It was red, obviously, as you can see, um, but it was kind of mirroring. Uh, NQ. So we immediately bounced here. It was uh, we needed to stay above 127 to be strong. There wasn't really much uh, many zones going on here, but the price action was pretty clean. Um, so I'll actually put that uh, 128 level back real quick. Uh, just pretend that says 128. And you could have taken this strong uh, above 128. Um, not the cleanest, but obviously actually kind of nice. So. Um, this is a, a new setup that I've kind of been looking at actually where it's like a, a basic, it looks like a basin candle the first five minutes and then we rip past it eventually or rip down. Um, when it's red, it's it looks good for up. When it's green, it looks good for down. Um, just something I've been noticing. Um, still have to do a little back testing on that and see, uh, you know, just get more, more days under the belt, seeing what I notice. But usually this has been working out pretty nicely um, when it's kind of like a red basin candle and uh, we have some momentum above a key level and look at that it you know to almost to the penny basically uh, 128 and you could have gotten long right at the break of 128 that would have been a great trade um, and then you know scale out accordingly um, and yeah that was a great trade so right as we broke 128 we were uh, breaking VWAP here on NQ um, or at least trying to push above it we we're bouncing off demand for NQ so a lot of good confirmations here um, a, if you wanted to take it, sorry, if the stop loss would have been a close below 128 um, and obviously just kind of have a trailing stop, I probably wouldn't have scaled out here. There's really no reason to. Maybe I scale one here after a strong push, uh, scale another after this big push, and as soon as we see sort of, uh, you know, resistance coming in, maybe you scale out full position here and you get a nice dollar move on Apple. That's pretty, uh, pretty nice. So the other uh, stock I was looking at was Tesla. Pull up Tesla real quick. And let's look at um, Tesla from. A, oops, sorry. Let's look at Tesla from a, a higher time frame analysis standpoint. Um, so a little clear in just a moment. So as you can see, we kind of have like this downtrend coming here, downtrend over here as well. But Tesla has been making higher lows here. We've actually been pushing up. We kind of have like this triangle here, this little wedge, as you can see. Um, I don't even need to draw the lines for you. Um, but so, yeah, we obviously in this uptrend, we're kind of approaching this breakout, which is kind of what happened here today. Um, another rally based rally kind of thing going on here. So another higher time confirmation, not the cleanest at all by any means. But um, I really like this basin candle. It showed that buyers were in control here and uh, it looked good if we get some uh, upward momentum. So uh, yeah, intraday time frame. Um, this is, again, <clears throat> hindsight, you know, I probably wouldn't have taken this trade, but just something to point out. Um, I wrote down in my uh, pre-market notes that I really wanted to try and take this long above uh, 615, 616 even. Um, as soon as we see some kind of uh, buying pressure come in, which was very evident, um, this probably would be an exception to this kind of rule. We had, uh, however, it's really, you know, not my style per se, but um, it looked really, really tempting at the time, and obviously it would have been a huge winner um, had you taken it um, at the close of this five-minute candle. I really like to wait for more confirmation on more basing, but considering the volume, it was definitely a possible trade. Um, so if you took that trade, I 
totally would have you know agreed with you as you can see that um, the volume is nothing compared to what we saw today it was almost a million shares traded within the first five minutes which should say something um, as you can see compared to every other day so yeah and to go along with that we kind of had like a basing candle it it, uh, it seems in the first five minutes so I guess you could have taken it um long let's look at the one minute I don't trade the one minute but you could see it cleaner on the one minute that this would have paid very very nicely um, this would have been nice this is like a little uh, opening range break or a little flag pattern even so we were kind of consolidating here and as soon as we took off um, even above 615 here um, yeah actually the pro optimal entry if you're trading on a one minute would be here um, just because we broke out of this uh, little range here we were ripping through use supply we were ripping just Completely destroyed this 30 minute supply and uh, it was a nice trade for those that took Tesla. Um, the other one that obviously is hypothetical is Facebook. I didn't take Facebook, but it looked decent. I wrote down above all time higher, above 334 at least. Let's look at the high time frame analysis real quick. Um, so Facebook a little choppy, but I did like kind of like this flag pattern it was forming. I did like this little wedge it was forming as well. So definitely some convincing factors. Um, I like this little inside bar here too as well. Uh, definitely some good things going for it on the higher time frame. So let's see what we got here. Oh, sorry. Let me go over how I got uh, 334. Um, I said above all time higher 334 in my pre-market notes that I wrote down here. And uh, not this, but here. I mean, as you can see, I'll do that quick little, uh, the quick little uh, resistance line here. As you can see, it touched one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so, you know, quite a bit, quite quite a few times um, for a good uh, entry. So pretend that says 334 here, um, and I would have entered, obviously, a little bit before that. Um, okay, so uh, this is a trade that probably wouldn't have uh, worked out. It probably would have been a loser, um, and I say that because my optimal entry probably would have been uh, this rally base rally, or it failed. So I probably would have entered at the open of this close, um, and as soon as I see it fail here, uh, I would have uh, gotten out for a loss, a small loss even, maybe even break even if I was lucky because I would have entered as soon as it closed. Um, I, this is a really, really nice move. I just wish you know we had some continuation. And the only reason why uh, we didn't really have continuation on this rally base rally was because look at where um, NQ was, what, look at what NQ was doing. We were rejecting off this 90 minute supply, which I wasn't too concerned about, but just something to keep on the back of my mind. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, maybe even that would have stopped me. Um, let me know what you guys would have done at this trade. That's why I didn't take the trade because of this 90 minute supply here. Um, but a very nice setup. Let's look at ES real quick to see what it, uh, ES was doing at the time. Um, ES at the time of this rally based rally was also somewhat weak. We were sort of drop based dropping at this point. Um, so not the cleanest either. And uh, we're below VWAP, as you can see. But we were bouncing off this 45-minute demand somewhat. So that was sort of, uh, you know, again, this isn't the highest quality of trades. And I really like to uh, work on taking the highest quality of trades, hence why I did not take this trade. Um, but uh, two trades that could have po been possible here were this uh, failed rally-based rally entry. Um, obviously, we had some follow-through, you know, later in the day. But... Another clean entry could have been at this uh, break of this little flag here too, but a little bit harder, maybe even the break of this high of day, quick push up and a very minimal scalp. But again, there was zero follow through on Facebook. I shouldn't say zero, but very, very minimal follow through. And that's why um, it didn't really work out. And yeah, so the, that is what I was looking at today before um, pre-market and how they turned out today. Let me know what you guys think and uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions at all. And uh, thanks for watching.